Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So three months ago, I had my last blood test. This blood test was taken on the 26th of August 2021. Enough waffling of me. Let's jump into the spreadsheet and let's see what my latest blood test results have got to offer. Let's see what supplements I've been taking since the last blood test. Uh, NMN 1.5 grams a day. Trans resveratrol 1.5 grams a day mixed into full fat yogurt. TMG, trimethylglycine 1.5 grams a day. Berberine 1.5 grams a day. Vitamin D3, 5,000 international units per day. But remember my last uh, blood test, that number had gone down. So I was on, I've been on 10,000 international units on a Sunday and Wednesday and then 5,000 on the other days. And we'll see if that's made an effect later. Vitamin uh, K2, 120 micrograms, and that's the MK7 version. Magnesium, 250 milligrams, and that's the L3 and 8 version. Hyaluronic acid, 200 milligrams of high molecular weight hyaluronic acid. Quercetin, 2.4 grams a day, and that's the first, second, and third of each month. And Fisetin, 2.4 grams a day on the first, second, and third of each month. And I'm still on one tablespoon of parsley, which is also mixed into my yogurt at lunchtime. As always, I'm only really going to cover the numbers that are out of the reference range or sneaking close to it, uh, but you can feel free to pause the video and check the numbers in detail. And again, let me know if you see something in the numbers that I have missed. So let's have a look at my lipid profile. As always, um, my total cholesterol is high, and that's because down here you can see my LDL cholesterol is high. That said, 216 is only 16 more than the 200 maximum in the reference range. And if you check all of these numbers, 216 is the lowest it has ever been. Um, HDL, 50, that's okay. The LDL is 147. Um, the maximum that they think could be allowed is 130, so it's only three away. And again, that 147, as well as the highest breaking snooker, is also the lowest it's ever been. Triglycerides are now 138, um, which is down from 149 and is down a lot from 421. And remember, that blood test was taken within a few days of uh, meeting up with an old friend and probably drinking too much beer. VLDL cholesterol, which is one I definitely want to see come down. 40 is the maximum. 27.6 is a good number as far as I'm concerned, and it's down from 29 last time. Um, Total cholesterol HDL ratio, 4.4, that's good. And the LDL HDL ratio is good as well. What do I think has caused these numbers to come down? Um, if you think back to my last review, I did mention that I was cutting back on the amount of red meat I was eating and upping the, chi upping the chicken and the fish. So maybe that has had an effect on these numbers. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So from lipids to blood, you can see here that my A1C is 5.9, which is what it was last time. Um, 5.9 is just inside the increased, increased risk area. Um, although it is going up slightly, um, or has gone up slightly since October 2019, uh, it's very, very gradual. I'm not sure what the rate of um, increase in this is if I'm heading towards diabetes. Average blood glucose is now down to 121, and 121 is right on the cusp of between excellent and fair control, which is good. Moving on, let's take a look at my liver profile. Everything seems to be okay apart from here. Globulin is 2.08, and 2.5 is what it should be as far as the minimum is concerned. Now, you can see here that it was also low in October, but for these months, it was okay. So I looked up globulin. Uh, and one of the reasons that this number could be low is through dehydration. So um, in the Emirates, it's difficult not to be dehydrated in the summer months. From a probably May, June, July, August, September, and into October, um, it is extremely hot here. And unless you're constantly taken on water, you will be dehydrated. Also, I take my blood test on a Friday or Saturday morning which means that I've been to the gym the day before, and if it's at the weekend, I may well have also added alcohol. So this could be the reason that this is low um, near in the end of the summer months, whereas in the winter, there doesn't seem to be any issue. 
So it's something I'll keep an eye on, but that might be a reason. And there's other things in the future with, the, with regard to these numbers that also lend themselves to probably some dehydration. So it looks like I may have to address that. So from liver to renal, you can see this is all okay. However, this number here, 108.9, is only 0.1 away from the upper limit. Um, again, I looked at chloride and it says it may be down to dehydration or interaction with other medication and to check sodium levels. So sodium is not part of this test, so I may look into that next time. Um, but really, these all seem to be okay. They're just inside range. Let's look at thyroid. You can see here, no issues at all, all within reference range. Moving on to vitamin D, you can see that it went to 59 and 52, um, <clears throat> down from 61. So I've gone up to 10 international units twice a week, and I've gone back up now to 64.9, which is where I'd rather it was. It was, um, As you know, I've done a couple of vitamin D videos, and it's not until you realize how powerful this hormone is in that it, it can affect fatigue, back pain, depression. It impedes wound healing, um, bone loss, hair loss, immune system, disorders and also remember that people who had lower vitamin D also had less favorable outcomes with COVID-19 uh, and if you've seen one of my my last update video you'll know I did get COVID-19 and I did have it may be the vitamin D but I did have very mild um, symptoms so vitamin B12 again no issues with vitamin B12 well within range Moving on, let's take a look at my testosterone. You can see here that it's high again, 735. That said, it was 744 last time and was classed as being within range. So the clinic, which is very annoying, has changed what they believe to be the reference range for testosterone. Uh, I don't understand why they why they do that. And they've done it on other, on other um, elements as well in the past. Um, so 735. To them is high that's okay because technically that's a high for a man of my age and i'm hoping that inside i'm a man of a younger age um 735 if you look also at a 16 to 21 year old their testosterone should be between 118 and 948 so 735 is still at the upper end of someone between the age of 16 and 21. Um, I thought total testosterone was a bit of a minefield to try and wade through to get some clear answers because lots of sites are contradictory and confusing. Um, many people in the past have said I should test my free testosterone because that's the one that really matters, so I did manage to get it done. I came back with a score of 15.31, which when you look at this particular clinic's uh, reference range, I should be between 12 and 40, um, although it doesn't stipulate ages for men it just says between 12 and 40 so i thought 15 was only just above 12 and i should be closer to 40 but as i said looking at free testosterone and what it is and what level should be is an absolute minefield i did find this particular chart which i found useful um, and interesting and here it says for someone over 30 it should be for a man 10.3 so 15.31 is well above that for a 30 year old so I was quite happy with that a man over 50 which is what I am it should be 8.3 so 15.31 is well above 8.3 um, I'm closer to 60 than I am 50 so I thought I'd look at the over 60s and they're talking about an over 60 year old free testosterone around the 6.9 mark and mine's 15.31 so I'm quite happy with my free testosterone number. That said, there may be people watching who have a better understanding of it. Um, if you've got links you can share or you've got information that you can give me to explain whether or not this is a good number, I'd be very much appreciative of that because this is um, an area that when you try to investigate it, we try to research it, there's a lot of contradictory information which can be quite confusing. Let's take a look at my iron. All good, no problems there whatsoever. Homeocysteine, again, no problems there whatsoever. Down from the last one and still well within range. C-reactive protein, again, well within range. Less than 3.0 is what they're talking about and mine 0 0.93. That said, it is edging up ever so slowly. Um, so I'll keep an eye on that, but really nothing to worry about with C-reactive protein. Moving on, looking at my lipoprotein, 
that again that is in with the rain within range that's down from last time my apolipoprotein a1 and b all within range no issues there whatsoever my amylase again all within range no issues there and down from last time so that's good also moving on let's take a look at my lipase now you can see last time that caused me some concern in that it had gone from 28 to 111 I thought this may have been an issue with the um, clinic and if it wasn't I definitely would have had to speak to the doctor about that massive jump but you can see here it's gone back down to 38 which is well within range up from 28 but still well within range um, so I'm guessing it probably was an issue with the clinic moving on to fructosamine um, this is an indicator of um, poor glycemic control I've gone from 2 to 8 down to 197 well under 286 which is good um, confusing and if someone can shed some light on this it would be great this number has dropped quite dramatically but my A1C which is also to do with blood sugar um, hasn't changed at all so I'd be interested to see um, people's comments on that let's take a look at the bloods all in all okay this one which is my mean corpuscle hemoglobin concentration is low it always seems to have been low um, the reasons for this is it says if you've got low hemoglobin you can see here my hemoglobin 14.8 is within range um, and bear in mind that the range is only from 14 to 17 so 14.8 is nearly 15 it's actually lower middle range so um, that may be something that I could talk to the doctor about. The free consultation that I get that comes with this, um, I may take up this time because the, the clinic is in Dubai because I'm still in Dubai. It is actually only about a 15 minute drive. So I may um, go through these numbers with the doctor and just see what he's got to say. Um, my second letter, lot of blood, and you can pause this. These are all within range. So I've got no problems or worries about that. My urine, my PP, is all okay. The only change is previously I've had a um, mucus thread trace. This time that's completely gone. So not sure what that was, but seems to be better. EGFR, this is very good. Um, EGFR low numbers show a decrease <clears throat> in kidney function. Mine was showing that, although it was gradually climbing. It's now gone to 94, which is four above normal, which means that my kidneys are working um, as and when they, as and how they should be. That said, 83 to 94 is quite a large jump. Is it similar to this jump of 28 to 111, which I think was down to an error in the clinic? So, is this jump from mild decrease in kidney function to normal kidney function? something to do with the clinic um, we'll find out in the next three months when I do the next blood test so those are the results I think all in all fairly good um, a couple of numbers coming back inside the reference range which is good to see a couple are very close or just outside the reference range I think that might be down to dehydration I will speak to the doctor and see what he says if he's got other ideas I'll either make a very short video or I'll do a community post explaining what he has said well that's it for today i hope you enjoyed the video as always thanks for watching please take care stay safe and i'll see you soon bye for now